show you um, these pictures. This is from a campaign, Roads Must Fall. Um, this is about taking down the statue and the legacy of colonialist um, Cecil Rhodes at Oxford. And the campaign, as I say, is part of decolonisation of academia, posing the question, why is my university curriculum white? Now, the Office for Students, which is the independent regulator, has become involved in this discussion. Um, Dahlia, what does it mean to decolonise uh, academia and university curriculum? Well, that's a very big question. To me, it rep there are three main pillars. So the first pillar is about decolonizing our curriculum, which is not just, it's kind of presented as, you know, students wanting to kind of take out key seminal um, figures out of our curriculum, but really it's about contextualizing uh, figures that we might look to as being neutral or seminal and actually contextualizing them within their colonial context, as well as also drawing from marginalized um, groups as, as part of our kind of basis of knowledge. Um, it's also about changing the structure of the university to make it more accessible and more democratic. And it's also about looking to the welfare and representation of students of color in all throughout our university system. Helen? So I think it's absolutely right in universities that you should be looking at a wide range of sources and actually questioning are the traditional sources the right range of sources. Um, I think as a vice chair of the Conservative Party for Women, making sure that, for instance, you're studying things that women have written as well as men writing, simple stuff like that to broaden horizons. So I don't think you should do this at the exclusion of focusing, for instance, on you know, the absolute priority on the priorities for the Office for Students at the moment, which is the attainment gap and making sure that attainment and making sure that you have a quality of opportunity through universities and and, and outcomes for all students. That is a, the, a, a very high priority, and I wouldn't want us to talk too much about this curriculum question when what really matters is students graduating with good qualifications. Right, so it's not the focus. Things, well, I think those two things are very connected because part of the reason why a lot of students of colour are alienated from their education system is because it doesn't represent the histories that they come from. So I don't think that those are necessarily... Um, different issues and we're going to have someone on later to talk about mental health. I think mental health of students of colour plays into this as well. The fact that, you know, racism, as in all parts of society, is also rampant in a lot of universities and within the curriculum. But, right, Michelle, what do you think? I mean, is it a case of universities teaching too much about dead white men? Well, I think we need to be very careful um, because... I keep, when I'm hearing about, you know, we're talking about pulling down statues and all the rest of it, because I think we've got to be careful of two different things. So when it comes to education, it absolutely should be diverse and it absolutely should make sure that people are um, contextualised and all the rest of it. So I agree with much of what you're saying. But I think that we also need to be very careful that we're not going back and looking, because I feel very strongly that we keep trying to look at history and how people were and how things were with the vision of modern day society and expectation standards and applying that. And as a consequence, looking to edit and remove people or things from the past. And it's that what I think is wrong. So when you talk about dead white men, if those dead white men have been relevant and done something interesting or noteworthy of history, then absolutely they should be there, not removed, but it should also be not just them, but there should be other and relevant people and things alongside them. So I think this is a really common misconception of particularly the politics of statues. So first of all, no one is calling for figures like Cecil Rhodes to be removed from history. We're calling for him to for figures like him to be contextualized. Mm. And interestingly, so why does the statue come down? I, because statues aren't where you go to learn about historical figures. Statues are well, glorified. They are for some people. No, well, most people didn't even know that the Cecil Rhodes statue existed in Oxford before the campaign. The campaign put Cecil Rhodes in the forefront of public consciousness. We want to. See see Cecil Rhodes represented and understood in the curriculum rather than in the form of a glorifying statue. And in terms of looking back with modern eyes, I think you'll find that a lot of people at Cecil Rhodes' time, including the people that he brutally colonised, had a bit of a problem with what he was doing. So this idea that it was a universal thing, that slavery and colonialism was fine when Cecil Rhodes was um, colonising Southern Africa, is erasing the voices of the black Southern Africans that he brutally colonised. Had those voices not been heard enough? in our education system. Helen, have we looked at history through a particular prism? Um, and is it through sort of Western hegemony, really, rather than the sort of experiences that Dahlia is talking about? 
I think it's changing, and I think in the in the current curriculum that there are particular areas of focus. I know when my kids do Black History Week, and it's a real focus um, uh, on a different aspect of history. Um, but I know back when when I was educated, everything was very very UK and Europe focused. And actually, I think as as we we look ahead and global Britain and needing to look beyond Europe and have stronger relationships with countries further afield, now is a really good time to look again at our curriculum and say, are we educating young people to live up, grow up? in the modern world and think about all the different countries and, and not have such a such a UK centric view of history I think is a good yeah clearly we need to understand our own history but in the context of the, the wider world yes yeah but I do also think that we shouldn't be um, afraid of celebrating or discussing or, or talking about or whatever history that belongs to the United Kingdom history is not always perfect it's not always rosy and nice you know there are terrible things that people have done and things that have happened and I guess it just makes me feel uncomfortable because when you say it's not about tearing down statues I actually think it is and I think that there's a really strong PC narrative from people to actually shut down and suppress and close away things that they don't like or things that they feel offended by